Good afternoon and thanks for coming to my kitchen. I have just gotten back this afternoon from going with the guys to a job that you'll see the video for that here shortly. And so I'm going to uh, start thinking about supper. So what I want to do is I want to make deer meat vegetable soup. So it's just like vegetable beef soup, only I'm using deer meat. So, I have all of my ingredients right here ready to go, and I normally put this in my crock pot, which what we really prefer, what is best to us, it just tastes so much better, is to put it in a Dutch kettle in a fire. That is the absolute best way that we love to eat vegetable soup, but I just don't have time for that today, so I'm so thankful for crock pots to be able to do it a quicker way sometimes. Today I'm actually gonna use my Instant Pot. And a lot of times why I like to use this, one reason why I do prefer to use the Instant Pot is because I can take my meat and I can saute it in the pan. Okay, so if we back up, if my meat is frozen, then I can put it in the Instant Pot. I can pressure cook it so that it's thawed out and it's already cooking. And then I can turn the setting to saute it and then once it's sauteed, I can just put all of my ingredients still in this one pot, then set it to crock pot and let it cook for however long it needs to cook. So the Instant Pot is a wonderful blessing. Um, however, there are some times when I don't prefer it just with certain things like um, my spaghetti sauce because I really like for it to be cooked in a regular crock pot because we like to cook it for a really long time and really darken that spaghetti sauce to where really there's like a black covering on top. And once it's got to that stage is when it tastes the absolute best. And I can't get that in this Instant Pot. So, but today we are gonna use the Instant Pot. And so I'm gonna start by browning cooking up my deer meat. I have a pound roughly of deer meat right here. I have some olive oil because um, you have to add some fats to deer meat because it's so lean. So I'm going to put that oil in my Instant Pot and I'm going to turn the Instant Pot on to saute. And you can adjust the, um, the settings as far as the saute on here as well, whether I want it on normal or whether I want it on um, more, which would be a higher setting, whichever that I choose. So you've got less normal and more. So I'm gonna put it on normal. That's typically what I like. So I'm gonna add the deer meat here into the Instant Pot to start getting that to saute. And what I've got here in front of me is all the ingredients that we'll need. So right here in this large glass bowl, I know that it looks kind of bad because it's all um, in one bowl, but these are all the vegetables that I'm going to put in there, including the um, can of the tomatoes and green chilies that I put in there. And these are the mild so it gives it a little bit of heat, a little bit of spice, and a little bit of kick. So I have two cans of just mixed vegetables in there, the small cans, and they were mostly carrots and potatoes with a few peas and green beans in it. So I have put roughly around a cup and a half, two cups of frozen peas in here, a can of corn, um, in the middle there are the mixed vegetables. And then I have here as well, there's my tomatoes and my green chilies. So with it all in here, I'm gonna be able to just pour it into um, the Instant Pot when it's time. So I've got my salt and pepper because I will add some of that. I have got, um, this is vegetable juice, 100% vegetable juice. Um, this is actually the first time that I'm gonna try vegetable juice. I've always just used tomato juice and that's great. I use the entire thing. Now, if I'm cooking outside on the fire with my vegetable beef soup, you have to have um, at more than one of these or at least right much water on standby. I would say at least a gallon because the, it's so hot um, cooking in a fire 
that the water just evaporates, the liquids just evaporate out so fast, and so you have to keep it soupy, and for the vegetables to get tender and to have a soup in the end, so you just have to make sure that you have right much liquid um, on the side. So I will be using this entire jug of vegetable juice. I have one large can of tomato puree. I'm doing this this time because this was vegetable juice and not tomato juice. I also have right here, this is four cups of warm water and I have put in one envelope of beefy onion soup mix. And I just mix that together. Um, I use beefy onion soup mix in many, many of my recipes. But especially with the deer meat because it will help to cancel out a lot of that game flavor that you get from deer meat and fool you into thinking you have beef. So we will be adding that. And then I also have some chopped up onions here to go in there. And I do like cooking with this a whole lot too. This is better than bouillon. This is actually the roasted garlic base flavor. So I'm going to add some of that to directly to the deer meat as well because right now I'm really trying to season up that deer meat and take away that game flavor. So since this is just a pound and then we already have the onion soup mix, and we're gonna have salt and pepper and all the other things to flavor that as well. And since bouillons tend to be salty, then I'm only gonna add half a tablespoon to this so that it's not overpowered because I have other things going along with this as well. So I'm gonna start stirring this up so that it can saute all the way through. Break your deer meat up. Just treat it exactly like hamburger. Okay, so we're gonna let that cook some more to continue browning. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle some salt in there. Just kind of cover it all. Add some black pepper. Just enough where I'm covering the top. I'm gonna stir that up. And let that keep cooking. I've actually turned my temperature up to more just to quicken the process up of this browning. So I can actually go ahead and add my chopped onions up in there now as well so that they will cook down some with that deer meat since it is browning up. that a stir. Just keep that deer meat chopped up real good so it can cook evenly. I cook it most of the way brown, but with something like this, I know that I don't have to cook it completely all the way through like I would like taco meat. Um, because this is going to cook for several hours, so I'm fine with that. Okay, so our deer meat is mostly brown. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding the rest of our ingredients. So I'm going to pour all of our vegetables in here. Give 
it a bit of a stir. And I like to season each layer as well too. So I seasoned the meat. And now that I put the vegetables in there, I'm gonna go on ahead and give it a little bit more salt and definitely more pepper. I just eyeball this for the most part. I know pretty much how much we like. The only thing I'm more careful with is salt. And um, I'm only really mostly careful with white salt because we do use Himalayan salt and it just seems to take more salt to get a salty flavor out of that than what white salt does. So I know in my mind with the experience of this um, Himalayan salt that I will need to use more. So I'm gonna stir that up. Get that salt and pepper mixed through. Try to get it mixed through evenly. Okay, I'm going to add my tomato sauce. soup mix actually beefy onion soup mix because they have those two different flavors give that a stir and I think about the salt that I add on my own as well too because things like I said the the bouillon and the onion soup mix, they're gonna have salt already in that. So I have to take that into consideration so that the soup is not too salty in the end. And then of course, we can always add more salt at the end if we need to. So now I'm going to add my vegetable juice. And this may not all actually fit in this pot. I may have to just pour what I can, which I think I am. Got about half of that in right now. But you know, with the tomato puree in there, it does help. So I'm gonna just keep a check on this as it cooks throughout the day and see if I need to add any more liquid to it. And if I do, then my choice will be the vegetable juice instead of water so that it's not watered down. So, just, so here it is in our pot. I'm going to change the setting of my Instant Pot to slow cook from saute. So you can see right there, I'm gonna put it on slow cook. Well, I think you have to cancel it first. So slow cook and then the plus or minus determines how long I want it to. So that's at eight hours, but I wanna change like whether it's low or it's high with a crock pot. So I've put that on normal, but I think I actually want it on more. So I need to change my hours. And I'm gonna put it on six and a half, not quite eight, because I have changed that temperature. It's more on a high setting. Our lid on, you can hear it beeping. That's telling me that it's ready. And I wanna make sure that my knob right here for venting or sealing is turned towards sealing because I want this to seal and to cook that. It's still going to do like a pressure cooking in a way, even though it's on the crock pot setting and the little metal dial right there or the knob just like with pressure cooking is going to tell me when the it does have raised pressure in it when that is raised up you do not just take this lid off you have to use this knob and you have to turn it towards venting and let all the steam and the pressure out and when that metal knob falls down in that hole is when you can take the lid off so i'm going to let this cook for six and a half hours and this will either be our supper tonight or maybe tomorrow if you give this recipe a try 
If you would like the recipe, just comment below and I will give you more of a detailed recipe for you to copy. If there's anything that you would like for me to cook in my kitchen, go ahead and let me know that in the comments as well. And if you would, please subscribe to our channel. And thank you for joining us in my kitchen today.